In this video, we're going to go over synapses. Synapses are the junctions between two neurons. There are two different types of synapses, electrical synapses and chemical synapses. You can see how electrical synapses work in this diagram. Essentially, the cytoplasm of the two cells are connected by gap junctions. This continuous cytoplasm allows molecules to move freely from one cell to another cell. There are several important consequences of having a continuous cytoplasm. The first is that the response is always the same as the source. This means if one cell experiences a depolarization, then those positive charges will simply move from that cell to the other cell to also result in depolarization. The same would be true if one cell gets hyperpolarized, then that's going to result in the other cell also becoming hyperpolarized. There's no way with an electrical synapse for a depolarization to turn into a hyperpolarization or vice versa. Another important consequence is that electrical synapses are bidirectional. So the signals can be sent from the first neuron to the second or from the second to the first. And the last point that's important with electrical synapses is that because they're simpler than chemical synapses, they allow for far less regulation. But they are still important biologically. And a very good example of electrical synapses is in cardiac muscle cells. And we'll look at these in more detail when we look at the circulatory system and the action potentials in the heart. So now, let's look at chemical synapses. You can see in this diagram that chemical synapses are more complicated than electrical synapses. In chemical synapses, the cytoplasm of the two cells are not continuous. In the presynaptic neuron, the axon terminals have synaptic vesicles that can be released into the synaptic cleft. When this happens, the neurotransmitters will diffuse across the synaptic cleft to bind to receptors on the postsynaptic membrane of the cell's dendrites. When the neurotransmitters bind to the receptors, they will cause effects to be elicited, and that can either open membrane channels or close membrane channels. Let's look at each of these steps in more detail. So if we want signal transmission across a chemical synapse, the first thing that needs to happen is the presynaptic neuron needs to fire an action potential. The action potential will travel down the axon and at some point it will reach the axon terminal. When it reaches the axon terminal, the depolarization, the influx of positive charges, is going to open voltage-gated calcium channels. This is going to cause calcium to rush into the cell. The calcium, when it enters the cell, causes the release of synaptic vesicles. And when the synaptic vesicles are exocytosed, this causes the release of neurotransmitters into the synaptic cleft. The neurotransmitters will diffuse across the synaptic cleft and bind to receptors on the postsynaptic neurons to open or close membrane channels. And finally, we don't want the neurotransmitters to stick around forever because then the signal will never end. So there are two ways to end the signal transmission. And this depends on the particular synapse and the particular neurotransmitters that are being used. So in some cases, the neurotransmitters are degraded. There are enzymes that essentially just chew the neurotransmitters up and they're not functional anymore. In other cases, the neurotransmitters can be recycled. So the presynaptic axon terminal may contain reuptake transporters that will transport neurotransmitters in the synaptic cleft back into the axon terminal so they can be repackaged into synaptic vesicles and reused. Okay, now here just take note that this is in general how chemical synapses work, but chemical synapses are more complicated, but this is the level of detail that you need to know for the exam.